to This is Pikeville. This will be your go-to source for everything going on in and around the city of Pikeville, including Main Street events and any tourism events that you might be interested in. Jimmy Taylor is here. He is the Director of Tourism, and Minta Trimble is the Director of the Main Street Program. Welcome. Thank you. To Thank you, This is Pikeville. We are so excited to have this time together to talk about all of the wonderful things that are going on in the city so we can mark our calendars for different events, whether it be the 2D district or whether it be times that we want to uh, get to Messalon, Main or Main Street Live or maybe to something that might have free hot dogs and inflatables for kids. I don't know. The 4th of July is coming Absolutely. up, right? Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. So let's get started about and talk about some of the events that we have ha has happened since the last time that we met. One of those um, events is Cops and Outlaws. It yes, was a great event and it raised money for such a wonderful cause. So Jimmy, I'm going to let you start and tell us about the Cops and Outlaws event. That event was put on by um, a group called the Track Rats and they're out of Prestonsburg. And they came in and they wanted to give back to the community. And what we've done is we've um, started a race the first of the year and the last of the year. First race is Cops and Outlaws and our last race of the year will be uh, first responders race mm -hmm. and uh, that event uh, it had almost 60 racers with um, probably close to 3,000 spectators and it raised over two thousand dollars for our police memorial yeah it's just a wonderful thing that we have those kind of events and when we when we talk about the races and things i think about all of the kids that come and how excited they get to to participate or just to watch and how it just kind of blows their mind when they see all that excitement take place that race we actually had the street outlaws in mm -hmm. and what a great group of people um, they signed autographs they talked with the people they were a a very great outfit to come in and actually socialize with our community. They, um, they were great. Yeah, they really were. And the people that I talked to that I actually got to attend were just were just amazed and blown away by how wonderful the, the event was. So congratulations to you. And we look forward to the one at the end of the season, too. Absolutely. That's coming up. Not only that, but all the other races that take place. Um, one other event that I do want you to touch base on really quickly, because I think it was a wonderful opportunity, again, for our kids. Every kid loves to fish. Fishing with the kids. Fishing with the kids. Awesome event. They had... Um, close to 220, 230 smiling faces out there. Uh, Chad Webb does a great job with Absolutely. this event, does every year. Uh, kids got free fishing poles. They got to spend the day with their family. Uh, one of those events that you can actually say very family oriented, so is Chad. He, yeah. done a, he does a marvelous job. Yeah, and I think about all the little kids that were, the pictures that we'll have of, um, you'll see on Facebook of the kids with their, their fishing pole or their big catch. Absolutely. And I think, you know, they're catching a whole lot more fish than I ever catch in my life. Oh my <laughs> you know, goodness. with all I try, but they do a great job. Minta, you have already had some great events this, this season, and we're just, you know, into the first part of June. Um, talk a little bit about the Main Street programs, events that have already happened. Yeah, we started quite early this year. Mm -hmm. We started with our new event at the 2D District, which is on 2nd and Division Street. And we began well, right after Hibbler Days mm -hmm. on the end of April. It's the last Saturday of each month. That we really try to get people to come downtown, look around and kind of see what there is there to do, you know, as far as getting something to eat, stroll the streets, and see what we've got set up. We have several different merchants out there uh, kind of putting their things out on the street and letting people kind of see a treat before they even go in. And I know at Mickey's at Menagerie, she even had some great samples of food mm -hmm. and art classes at Rustic Roots. And then we also had a lot of games set up and things for the kid to do, kids to do. Uh, our second one did get rained out. It's been such a, you know unpredictable time right now with the weather. But our next one is coming up June 30th. Yeah. So we're really excited about that one because it is kind of like Half the day, the earlier part of the day, will be really more, more focused about downtown shopping, things to do that we'll have out there at the, at the Main Street tent, which is always set up at Jenny Wiley Theater right there on their plaza, and up close to Appalachian News Express beside C.C. Bell and Bank 253, you'll find our other tent that you can hear all kinds of great deals or prizes and things, you know, that we're going to have during those events. This one, though, on June the 30th, it starts our summer concert series. So that evening, we'll start into music. Um, haven't confirmed this part yet, but we'll be working with Bank 253 to begin the evening, hopefully, on June the 30th, and they'll have some music. We'll have a DJ in the middle of the evening and kind of 
keep that going. And then around 7.30, we're going to, on Division Street, have our, like, just grab a chair and sit down concert series. You know, when we started Main Street Live, and we're so glad that the expo, you know, is continuing that and having that venue outside and whether it's bad, it continues inside. It still gives people that opportunity. With this, it's a little bit more non-produced, I want to say. Mm -hmm. You know, the, well, we won't have tables and chairs that, uh, out there on the... Uh, on Division Street. It'll be held like on the grassy part of the Judicial Center. We're just going to have good old camping chairs, you know, and ask people to bring theirs or we'll have, <clears throat> excuse me, them um, to have one right there for them. They won't have to worry about that. And just have music and we'll be partnering with Alltech and Dueling Barrels as they get open to have a beer garden. And we're just really excited that we can bring that evening event on a Saturday evening and still have things to do on a Friday you know, evening too with everything going on with Jimmy and, and his gang and the expo does. So it's just, you know, we're really excited. Uh, this one's going to be called Stars, Stripes and Sizzle. So during the day, you know, we hope maybe just somebody's going to cook some hot dogs and sell them downtown. And we're also asking that any nonprofit organization, anybody in, you know, the city that wants to set up, like let's say if KICOM from, you know, the medical school or something was raising money and they wanted to set up a, something for a fundraiser, you know, coming down and join us. If the Boy Scouts, you know, and, and just anything to fill the streets with that great momentum of walking around. But um, what I was going to say is then the evening rolls into, we'll have games out there for people to play, cornhole and just, you know, uh, horseshoes. I know we have some safe horseshoes. That we're, mm -hmm. We've been using kind of like their plastic and rubber, but um, we're really excited about this and we'll be doing a little bit of pre-July 4th since it's on June 30th. So that is going to be like you said on July 30th but what a wonderful this will be the first time that we've done this kind of event with a concert series. It definitely is. It, it definitely is like I said a lot less production going into this. Um, we want it to be a little bit more authentic as mm -hmm. far as um, the type of music that you'll hear is not so like I don't know how to say it. We, we really, really we want people just to relax there. Right. Yeah. Lay um, back. Right. And give the other places like Bank 253 or different restaurants or, or different, you know, places in town that want to uh, be included in that experience to partner with Main Street to do that. Um, so last Saturday of every month, that's going to happen in July. It's beach night and we will have a beach band there. And in August, it's back to school, and that's going to be called the Downtown Hippie. Mm -hmm. So we want everybody like to bring out their daisies and <laughs> their bell bottoms and everything like that. And that'll be a back to school event. And then in September, will be our tailgating and wine tasting that we had last year, to where the merchants literally fill the streets with you know their 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 merchandise in the back of the trunk of their car. So we've got those four months for our summer concert series. Something we didn't do last year, this is new this year, and I can't imagine that it will not be a huge success because just sitting here listening to you talk about it and being part of, of seeing the concert series that have been with Main Street Live and then seeing how you, you literally walk off the streets to shop is kind of like what it is and seeing how excited people get just to get out and stroll around and walk right. and bring their kids and strollers. And, and a lot of times it's hard to, and dare I say, get a parking place sometimes when you're like shopping through the week, but to be able to park and then just walk everywhere and see what those merchants have to offer is a really interesting opportunity. Right, and like I said, we want different types of things. We mm -hmm. want artisans to be there. We want music people to be there. This is, you know, a, a growth for us, and it, it's expanding into another type of event, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it, it, it's going to take us a while to build. You know, any event usually takes three years to really hit solid ground. But we are reaching out to people and saying, if you have something that you have of a handmade experience mm -hmm. and you want to share that with people, uh, you know, Main Street is, is definitely wanting to partner with those those type of, um, of crafters and things. You know, we've said, what can we name this at the 2D? It's not a night market. It's not, it's, it's not a, it's maybe a day market kind of to say. But it's more about nothing mass produced. You know, farmers market will be joining us at certain times. You know, they'll bring their produce and things. Mm -hmm. Then yet when you want to pop into Art and Gift or you want to, you know, walk around the street to Dance World or you want to eat downtown, those are there. And that's the, you know, the, uh, the foundation of this. 
Well, I look forward to being part and, and strolling and walking and partaking in the music because I think it's such a fun, a fun time. And you see it a lot of times around festivals, particularly when you have a certain area dedicated to concerts and then you see people carrying their, their camping chairs or their folding mm -hmm. chairs and they just sit or they bring a blanket and they sit in a blanket and watch. How What a fun community event that is Absolutely. and a great family time. Uh, because you know we're kid friendly all over the city and, and what a wonderful way to bring your kids out and know that you're going to be in a blocked off area mm -hmm. and be able to enjoy Correct. just enjoy our town and Great that'll idea. take us right into the to the fourth I yeah. know the city always has such a phenomenal display of fireworks and everything mm -hmm. on July the fourth well, tourism looking. usually takes care of that I think don't they Jenny? Yes, we do. Free hot dogs, hot dog eating contests. Oh, oh, oh yeah, goodness. I was there for that last year. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's one of the not, good things. I didn't participate, but yeah, that was fun. We've done watermelon eating contests too before. Mm -hmm. That's always really? interesting. Yes, put that on your list. You might want to add that. I will put Jot that, that on down. My list. Well, let's talk about too. We have so many events. That just takes us to the 30th, but you mentioned the months to come. There's always something, and we're going to get together once a month to talk about everything coming up so we can keep the community and people around our region informed of what's going on. Because really, and City Manager uh, Philip Elswick and I have talked so many times about we really are, really are the hub of activity for so many of our surrounding areas. So we want to keep everybody as informed as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, one project that, that we're going to talk about is the River Cleanup. That's yes. coming up on uh, 23rd. June 23rd. Now we need volunteers for that because it is kayaking season. It and is. if you've ever been in our river, which is one of my very favorite things to do, you get to see how the Pride program and, and different programs that have been involved for years have really helped to, to clean up that area. But we do have flooding. We do have problems. We, and goodness knows we've had so much unpredictable weather, water. as you said, mm -hmm. and high water. The trash does get, get into our streams. It so does. we need to make sure that we get that cleaned up. We do, and uh, that being said, 23rd, we need to get all the volunteers that we can to come down, meet us at the Texas Roadhouse. Uh, we'll have all the supplies you're going to need. Uh, we'll uh, feed you. Mm -hmm. We'll make you laugh. We just really need a lot of volunteers to help us with that cleanup. Yeah, now how do they um, get involved with being a volunteer? Because we have so many different groups and organizations that may want to come out and team up together. So who do they contact? They can contact me personally, 606-213-7545. Okay. Uh, they can email me at jimmy.taylor, pikewellky.gov, or they can contact Andy Linton at his okay. numbers. It's always wonderful to see people come together and volunteer to clean up those streams. And when you, I think when you use those streams and you get on those, on the waterways, be it via kayak, john boat, whether you like to wade fish or whatever, you see um, how important it is to make sure that we keep our area clean and take great pride in what we have to offer to everyone in the surrounding area. Miss Betty does a wonderful job up there with the zip saddle and paddle. Yeah. I, you couldn't ask for a better uh, person to represent the city. She, uh, out, she goes out of her way. I totally agree, and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about um, that opportunity too, because it is the season of kayaking, it is the season of horseback riding. And, uh, if you are a horse lover, going up to Dream Stables and getting oh, on yeah. horseback and going through the trails at Bob Amos is a different way to see this city, it is. because you don't even feel like you're in the city see, anymore. Right. That's the great thing about it. You can be right in the middle of everything and have no idea that you're there good opportunity. Um, Farmers Market has opened. Their grand opening weekend is the 9th, which is coming up. So um, lots of different things that they are incorporating this year, but there are some improvements to the Farmers Market, like upgrades for easier access and easier some other access, things I want you to talk uh, about. Bigger restroom facilities. I can't say enough about Joyce and Charlie. Um, they've done a wonderful job getting this project off the ground. We have a lot of vendors that come in there. They sell uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, crafts. You can go up there from, you can find from peas to handmade soap. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's great that our community comes together and is able to sell their, their things that they have. Yeah. I love it. And for the grand opening, I know you see on your screen now, musical guest Glenn Simpson is going to be there kicking off. Uh, grand opening of Farmer's Market weekend and that is going to be wonderful music so when you get there and you're shopping for your your peas and your salad and they have fresh um, apple herb butter. plants, apple butter, yes. cupcakes, oh, I mean come on, mm -hmm. the baked goods and then as you as the season progresses obviously you get the bountiful harvest of all yes. the fresh produce that we have um, where you get to sit down for what I call garden dinners you know when you have your potatoes and your uh, tomatoes and cucumbers. Favorite dinner. <laughs> and 
<laughs> so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but just to see how they have incorporated local artisans too that that make goods or uh, woodcrafters. Bill Heisey with his stained glass is it's, phenomenal. He is phenomenal. Absolutely. Right. So you can find a little something for everybody at the Farmer's Market. And like you said, they'll join you for some of your Saturday events, they too. They will, because the Farmer's Market goes from early in the morning until 1 o'clock in mm -hmm. the afternoon. 9 to 1. Right. And so where ours is going to start, you know, a little bit up in the day, mm -hmm. I know that they will. There'll be, you know, some of those crafters and, and people yeah. that, you know, participate locally. And just, you know, to come on up and while they have it out. And, and, yeah. you know, and like, the beautiful pavilion, it's uh, on the Kentucky Bridal Registry. Yes. You can actually now rent that online at pikevilleky.gov mm -hmm. uh, for uh, your parties, your weddings. It's a beautiful receptions. place. Receptions. Yes, ma'am. Receptions also. I know uh, Pikeville High School had to utilize the facility for the Grand March this year because of the rain. And yes, I cannot tell you how gorgeous it was. It was beautiful. They did it upright. They did. And I've also seen it set up for a wedding. So, like you said, you can go to visit pikeville.gov and book that event on, book that venue. Just Pikeville, one more venue. Pikevilleky.gov. Pikevilleky. Yes, I'm sorry. Pikevilleky.gov to, to book that. But obviously, um, Farmer's Market every Saturday, every Tuesday. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And, uh, look for great things to come from there. Minta, one of the, the events that that we love, and it's probably one of the most beautiful events that we have in the city is the Dinner in White. Got postponed because of the unpredictable weather, weather once again, but you have a rain date for that. So let's talk a little bit about what's coming up for Dinner in White. Yeah, this past Saturday, June the 2nd, you know, it, it was kind of like everyone was watching their phone, you know, what, what's the weather going to be, what's the weather going to be. And there's a lot more involved than just making sure that there's not rain. When we're dealing with electricity and lights strung over the street and things, the safety is, is definitely yeah. a consideration. So after the rain and some things on Saturday, you know, we kind of looked at the weather and we said, you know, we're going to have to go with our rain date that was set at the, the, at the beginning. And, you know, Dinner and White has always happened the third weekend in June. We try to have it the first weekend, but it seems like the weather just never wants to cooperate. <laughs> so it is going to be June the 16th. This is our third year. We're so excited. This year we are working on 50 tables. I mean, mm -hmm. we're right pushing it right there. I think we had 48 on Saturday, and that means we have 48 tables of eight people and sometimes 10 people at a table that want to come out and support this fundraiser. Mm -hmm. This is a fundraiser that goes towards downtown revitalization and artistic you know, um, things that we want to um, give the community and our tourism people and uh, visitors, you know, something to see when they come to town. And I think Dinner and White is, is, is just wonderful. It, you know, the UMG, oh my gosh, those, those guys are so awesome. They string the lights down Main Street and um, we put out beautiful decorations. This year it was just going to be phenomenal. UMG built a handmade swing you know, that just is gorgeous that we're going to um, have everyone buy a ticket on that, hopefully, and that'll be another part of our fundraiser, along with the wine pool. And we have several local um, companies and um, donate things to the event. So they, they really are they see this as a community um, event and get involved with us, and we're so excited about that. Our sponsors are just great. So we're, we're all ready to go for June the 16th. We, you know, I'm sure there'll be some people that can't make it, that on the 2nd, uh, they were going to be able to, but now on the 16th, they might not be able to, and we apologize for that. But, it, you know, we can't control the weather. Uh, so you can contact me if you think you might want to, you know, have that experience and share with us and contribute to that fundraiser. And uh, that would be uh, at Minta Trimble. Um, Minta dot Trimble at PikevilleKY.gov. I always forget that dot there. <laughs> <laughs> or MainStreet.com, PikevilleMainStreet.com. Yes, I do want to mention how people eat while they're there because our downtown local businesses, they have menus that you can order from. And are those dinners delivered or do you pick them up and bring, it, bring them with you? How does that work? It depends on the restaurant. You know, we have three participating restaurants that contribute to this year having a special dinner and white menu. Blue Raven, they were going to do like a picnic box and it's, it's, it's a really nice, you know, sandwich and appetizer and things, you know, not just your normal sandwich. Blue right. Raven doesn't do anything normal. They're a fantastic restaurant. Not just your normal picnic box. Not just your normal <laughs> picnic box. So you go pick that up at Blue Raven and you bring it with you. So dinner and white means you dress in white, you, you come, and you decorate your table. We have a decorating uh, contest to see who decorated the table the best. And let me tell you, I hope the girls that uh, from the hospital, they are going to have one of the, the, the probably most uh, talked about mm -hmm. dinner and white tables when it comes about on the 16th. 
But so Blue Raven, you would go pick yours up. Chiricos, um, you also have to pick up. Bank 253 didn't have a, a particular menu, but I know that they were taking call in orders. And then Land and Sea Grill will be cooking on site, so they okay. deliver to your table. So it's just different as to you know the restaurant as to what they wanted to do. But we look at this as an experience to support them as mm -hmm. well, and uh, you know just give everyone a taste of the restaurants we have downtown. But you know they can also just bring if they if they have fixed some wonderful pasta or coleslaw or, or sandwiches from their home, they can bring whatever they want. Yeah. You know. We don't insist that you have to place an order. You bring what you would like, and then we have um, drinks there available, and that too is part of the fundraiser. And you know, I keep saying fundraiser, but it, it's so important that people now have to, well, are able to see where last year's event, the, the proceeds from that, is on the back of Jenny Wiley Theater. I mean, we are just so so excited. And that's, that's where I'm heading next. Um, I was out of town while the, the painting started, the mural on the back of Jenny Welly Theater, just opposite of Altec and Dueling Barrels. And I started thinking about who really is getting up there and painting all those circles. And I watched yeah. it progress <laughs> as I was gone. And then the minute I got back in town, I drove downtown right on Haley Boulevard so I could see it in person. And literally, if you haven't seen it, you will be blown away by the, just number one, how beautiful it is. But to think that somebody hand painted Every bit, of that. every bit of it. Every bit of it. Every six, six complete section of it. And it's gorgeous. Yeah, you and G provided us. Well, well, they tried to provide us with a uh, a um, lift. The lift. lift. Yeah, the lift. But that didn't work. It wasn't high enough. So we did make other arrangements for the lifts. Lift and Jordan Justice, the artist, and his family's from Elkhorn City, and it was just such a great experience to see all of his family watch him make such. You know, that's going to be up there for longer yeah. than we live. Mm -hmm. And so, before he painted it, he freehanded everything, every he, single bit. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. When I first seen it and I seen that he had etched it out before he painted it, I was amazed. Yeah. It was it was it was very amazing. He did one of the bears, you know, when we did the bear affair, and that's where that we met Jordan from and and then we, we, we talked with different artists and we had to stay within a certain amount because, you know, even though we say we're fundraising, we're fundraising, you know, there are expenses that goes with that. So we wanted to be able to stay with something that we could, you know, do and finish and not say, well, we've completed one half of her face or something like that. <laughs> right. That would be bad. But um, as as he, he um, presented his uh, different sketches, we knew that he was the one that we wanted to follow through with this and, and that we could afford. So he came up with her through, through uh, the work with uh, Misty Potter, who is our design chairman um, on Main Street, and, and all of our input. So this girl was kind of um, a take from the character in Hairspray, mm -hmm. and Jenny Wiley Theater has performed that. But then it's got a little bit of pop art to it, mm -hmm. so it has a lot of different feeling, not just after one particular thing. And uh, we left a big white bubble there to the side. So she's going to have something to say. Every time that there's something going on at Jenny Wiley, you're going to be able to drive up the boulevard and look at that and know well, such and such is playing for the next month at Jenny Wiley, and she's also, you know, going to tell her name. And we've had a, uh, some people say we should call her Jenny, and some people say we should start it with a something P for Pikeville, like you know Penelope, Penelope. from Pikeville. But and the people at the high rise across the street uh, at Myers Towers, they've named her Dot. <laughs> Because, because of they all the watch, dot. they 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 uh, no. I take that back. Somebody named her Dot, but another one called, wants to call her the Dippity Doo Girl. Dippity Doo. And because they they loved the construction of that, yeah. they said that gives them something to look at. But this year's dinner in white will allow us then to go to Second Street side of Jenny Wiley, mm -hmm. and we will be continuing with Jordan on that. And it's going to be a little bit different as to you know not so. Um, it won't be a, a certain thing that the theater has done. It will give you an insight to the theater, mm -hmm. let me just say that. And we hope to follow up with that with our augmented reality to where you'll be able to use your phone and hold it up to the mural. And that one will be you know, very exciting for mm -hmm. us to bring forth as well. And we just hope that people that visit the area and live in the area you know, know when they're contributing to 
you know, the uh, different events that we have that it they're a part put, of it. Right, all gets put back it does. To, to within that area. And I will tell you again, if you have not seen her yet, she is hard to miss, I will say. <laughs> she is hard to miss, but it is gorgeous. And I'll tell you, I'm a little envious of people that can actually do that type of art because it is such a gift and such a talent. Yes, and I cannot wait to see what he puts on the other side. So we may have a name for her, maybe by our next show, and we you know, might have a vision of what the next one's so, going to look well, like. Well, I think it'll be definitely by the next show. We hope to reveal the name at our Jenner and White on the 16th. Very good. And everyone that maybe hasn't made it around Hamley Boulevard, which I don't know who that might be, we'll get to see the unveiling of her yeah. in, a, in, a, in a large format there uh, yeah. during Jenner and White. She is certainly something to see. As we go along, let's talk about some things that are coming up from the tourism side too, because we have a lot of stuff going on at the Expo Center and different runs and things. So Jimmy, I'm gonna let you look at your list and let's start um, just what's coming up next in the city. Uh, we this have weekend, Muscle on May. Yes, the 8th and 9th. If I do not mention this, Andy will kill me. The 8th <laughs> and the 9th. <ninth. laughs> uh, Friday is the big tire, small tire. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be hosted by the Track Rats again this year. And Saturday, uh, the gates will open up at 8 a.m. And Test and Tune starts around 2. And racing will start around 6, 7 o'clock. If you've not been there, I invite you to go check that out too because it's really loud and a lot of fun, especially it's if you're a car enthusiast. Very exciting. Also coming up this weekend, I mentioned the grand opening of the Farmer's Market, yes, which is going to be a great time. Relay for Life coming up also on June 8th. Yes, ma'am. Need to make uh, plans. If you haven't put your group together yet for that, definitely want to attend that. Lots of different um, races and events coming up. But one thing I do want to mention on the 16th, of uh, June, a great event at the Expo Center. The Gaither Vocal Band is yes, going to be there. And if you are a fan of Southern Gospel music, of Christian oriented music, the Gaithers have been around for ever seems like. I can remember them as, even as a small child, but it's a wonderful inspirational evening to attend with your family. Yes ma'am. Uh, we've also got Main Street Live. Mm -hmm. That's the first and third Friday of the month. This one is uh, Sons of FM. It's an 80s band. Lots of fun there. They've, Lots they've of been fun. To, to Main Street Live mm -hmm. before. The 29th Lion King experience at Jenny Wiley. I can't mm -hmm. forget that. Mm -hmm. And um, I also want to mention that uh, if you want to know what's going on in Pipeville, come to visit Pipeville.com. It's got our events right there on that page. Yeah, that's the one thing for me too. And also uh, Tourism and Main Street also have Facebook pages that are updated regularly. And a lot of people, that's where they go to for their information. If they just pop up their phone, hit the Facebook, type it in, and it gives those events to there. And if there's gonna be a rain delay or something is adjusted some way, that, uh, that information is listed there. Main Street has become a lot more proactive this year, you know, realizing that most people are on their phones no matter what, right, or Sean, right. you know, and um, that's been our source uh, as to reach out to them. So we have, you know, engaged in just a social media chairman right. that takes care of that. Another event that I would like to mention is July the 14th in the Riverfield is Motorcycles on May. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we're, we partner with Hibbley Christmas in July every year, and Kids Day in the Park will occur earlier the day on that day, is that uh -huh. right? That's correct. Okay, so then that evening, what happens is we give the experience for the kids to have fun. The evening, they, they start the ride at the Harley Davidson store. They're above Pikeville, and they ride down to this year in the Riverfield. And they're going to have some great, I know, motorcycle burnouts and things. But Main Street will be partnering with them on that, too. We'll be cooking hot dogs and doing another part of a fundraiser. Right. <laughs> We're going to just start saying a fun raiser <laughs> instead That's of leaving exactly out the dude. Right. And so I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that that is for um, the Shriners children. Yeah. And uh, so that's July the 14th. Always puts on a good show. Jimmy and we're excited that, to do this in the Riverfield too. You know, we've always did, uh, have, you know, had the motorcycles line up down Main Street. So this way you'll definitely get to walk around the Riverfield and look at different kinds of motorcycles and things. Always something to do in the city of Pikeville from a tourism aspect, from Main Street. We will get together again uh, to update everybody on what's going on in the month of July. But if you need information, visit Pikeville.com, Main Street on Pikeville Facebook. PikevilleMainStreet.com. PikevilleMainStreet.com. Pikeville, Pikeville City Tourism on Facebook. Anything. 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 We've got Anything to cover. Anything Pikeville. <laughs> this has been This is Pikeville. That's what we're going to call it. This is Pikeville. Anything you need to know about the fun events going on in our city. Minta, Jimmy, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to our next visit. Thank you for thank having you, us. Thank you, Jill. This has been This is Pikeville. Until next time, have a great day.